Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2019 Shutter Original 0 megahertz or 0, 0.0 megahertz because they have the 0, 0.0 in the title. I don't know why. They could have just done 0. Well, I mean, I do know why because it's technically how it appears and what they're referring to in the film. But anyway, um, I'll just call it 0 megahertz. That's how we're going to do it now. So like I said, this is a Shutter Original. Now, Shutter Originals for me have been a little bit rough recently. Um, the, I watched The Marshes some time back, and that was terrible. Jessica Forever was not very good either. But I did see the show The Deadlands, which was a Shutter original, and that one is worth watching and good. This actually is another worth watching and pretty good. It's not perfect. I do have problems with it, and I'll go over that. But overall, I would say watch Zero Megahertz. It is a good enough film to, to check out, in my opinion. And for being a Shutter original, these are very low-budget films, and you can kind of tell it. Um, they achieved a lot with a with what I assume is a pretty low budget, so that's good. Um, it's uh, based on a comic by Jack Jang. I'm not familiar with the comic or anything, or Jack Jang. Uh, it was written and directed by Sun Dong Yu, who did another film called Masudan. Haven't seen that one, don't know anything about it. This is a South Korean film, so it is subtitled. So if people, you know, if you have a problem with subtitles, you're going to want to avoid this one. But I would say just watch stuff with subtitles unless you have an issue with reading subtitles because, you know, you um, get migraines. I know that happens with my mother, actually, or, you know, you have a visual impairment or anything like that that keeps you from doing it. Um, other than that, if you have no legitimate reason you just don't like doing subtitle films, get over it. Just got to say, because there are a lot of good stories out there. So anyway, uh, real quick, not doing spoilers for this one because it is new. It is just hitting Shutter. When I'm putting this review up, it hasn't hit yet. I believe it hits on the uh, Thursday. Now I gotta go check my email. Sorry about that, people. <laughs> uh, real quick, it goes up April 23rd on Shutter, so it'll be available then. And April 23rd is the Thursday. Yeah. Their new stuff usually comes out on Thursday. So April 23rd on Shutter, it's available. All right. So um, one of the bad things is very early on, there's like a setup scene to give you kind of backstory for, for the movie, which that scene is interesting enough and it's pretty intense and crazy. And, you know, um, it, hit, it, it hits the ground running, I shall say. But there is some incredibly shaky camera work at that point. I understand why it's shaky, but it's too shaky in my opinion. It's too much. It's hard to focus on things, get you a little bit queasy. If you're like me, motion, a lot of motion with camera can kind of do it for me. That's why I hate the movie Cloverfield because it's too much. So they could have really backed that down. Um, it does become a little bit of a problem again later on, but mainly just that beginning portion and then a few other small times. But for the most part, the camera work is relatively... Um, good stability wise so just a few issues here and there it immediately establishes establishes itself as a j horror type film so if you are a j horror film type fan which i'm actually not but i enjoyed this um i would think that people who are into j horror would particularly like this and want to check this out for that reason like i said i'm not big into j horror but i did like it so i would assume then that people people who are into that genre or subgenre I mean um that you would definitely want to check this one out it's interesting enough the audio there was an issue with the audio like the beginning portion that kind of setup I was talking about it has you know a certain audio level and then they go to uh another portion of the show or the movie where they kind of like back down the intensity and the audio goes way down so I had to like really adjust it now once I adjust it there I didn't need to adjust it again but it was just this really weird thing where like the audio levels here and then all of a sudden the audio levels here. And I'm like, it's a weird jump. Minor thing, but you know. Um, after the heavier intro, it actually takes on kind of a fun, fun vibe. And it uh, has like comedic moments that pop up, which is kind of nice. It kind of like steps back and it's, you know, a little light, a little fun, a little funny and... I enjoyed that. Like, I like that. Now that ends up going away. It's one of those typical kind of um, setups for, for a horror film where it's like, things are crazy. Here's a little bit of a, of a look into how crazy things are. Now we're going to show you these people, introduce them to you, let you understand who they are, show them in their fun loving life. And then we'll get into some bad stuff. 
and then all that fun loving stuff and the joking around and comedy goes away so um, I really enjoyed it during the lighter portion because it felt natural uh, and it was a cool introduction for the characters themselves so that was nice uh, you can tell the limited budget kept them from going all in on the practical effects, but they make up for uh, what's kind of lacking with nice camera work and interesting camera angles and intentionally kind of uh, concealing camera angles at times and also uh, lower lighting. That's another thing. They use lower lighting to kind of cover up not only some of the practical effects that they can't do as well, but the CG as well. So, and, and that's the thing. Like For the most part, the CG that is used in this actually looks pretty good because it's in lower lighting. Um, there's one thing in particular, though, that does not look good with CG. There's like some fire at some point, and the fire looks not good. Uh, all the other CG, though, pretty good. And this is, this is one of the problems with using CG, but I know it, it, there's not really much getting around that. I will say overall, the camera work is pretty good in this film. The directing is quite good. The camera work is quite good. Good cinematography. A lot of interesting camera angles. It looks pretty stylish for the most part. Um, this director and their cinematographer should keep doing films. It does look quite good. Uh, I was pretty impressed for a Shutter original how inspired the directing was. I mean, that sounded really derogatory, but... You know, when I think about, like, Jessica Forever and the Marshes and stuff like that, I'm just thinking about those and then placing this next to it and being like, this is way better. So that's why I say that. Um, they actually explain the title for this movie relatively early on in the film, which I think is a very good thing, because going into this film, you're like, why? Like, it's such a weird title. Like, what? So the fact that they explain that relatively up front is a good thing. I quite quite like that uh solid acting in this there there is good acting in this um better than you would assume for a lower budget film so i was very happy with that uh like i said directing cinematography good the music was really nice in this i thought it was very appropriately matched for all the scenes you know nice and easy and appealing to the ear when it was a more easy scene and then very intense and tension driving when it was a more tense situation so they did a good job with that they have the harbinger in this which is a kind of formulaic thing for certain types of films uh if people don't know what i'm talking about they kind of talk about that concept in the movie the, the cabin in the woods the harbinger like the person who um kids run into or you know young adults run into teenagers and they're like oh no don't go to this place it's terrible there are terrible things happen there you're gonna die type thing so i just thought it was kind of funny that they used the whole harbinger trope but I liked it. There was a jump scare that actually made me perk up. I mean, it didn't, like, scare me. But you know when it's kind of like the in-between of, like, you weren't quite caught off guard, but it did kind of surprise you a little bit. It didn't quite scare you, but it, like, got your attention more. So there's a there's a nice jump scare in this. And, um, yeah, they do a few jump scares. The way they edited this film actually keeps it moving really, really well at a good pace. Up until about the 45 minute mark and then I think after that it really slows down considerably I think they should have cut a bunch out between probably about the 45 minute mark to maybe the hour and 30 minute mark they should have cut maybe about to be honest like 10 to 15 minutes out of that at least um, yeah 10 to 15 you know 15 on the on the upper end 10 on the lower end yeah definitely 10 to 15 minutes they should have cut out of that portion because it's moving at such a good pace and it's really, really moving well and you're very engaged until that 45 minute mark and then it, it just starts to really slow down and you're just like, ooh, it's becoming a little bit of a slog and it picks up at the end, thankfully. So I just need to edit down a bit more. Uh, so I already talked about the CG thing. There's a scene ripped from an old classic horror film that is done with CG in this, was not done in, with CG in the classic horror film. Uh, and it actually looked pretty good in CG in this. I was I was pretty impressed. It looked good. It was effective. And when you see it, you will know what I'm referring to. It's towards the end. The main evil in this film, when it is shown, it's not shown, um, like, when it, I mean when it's shown, like, straight on, like, fully. Because you get, like, bits and pieces, you know, earlier on. But when you see it, like, head on, you get a really good look at it, it looks good. And that's a big thing that a lot of horror films don't deliver on is, um, you know, when you finally see it, it's very disappointing. Like, 
the movie Signs by M. Night Shyamalan, like, uh, all throughout the film, you know, you get these little bits and pieces of the aliens, and they look, it looks really good and creepy and everything, but then when you see the whole thing, you're like, really? That's, that's, okay, that's it. This film does not do that. It doesn't fall into that. They give you a good-looking evil. So, awesome. And it had a solid ending. I was happy with the ending. It was cool. There's, you know, a bit of a twist to the ending, which I enjoyed. I could, uh, I could see myself watching more by this filmmaker. So, good job. Uh, and then the last thing I have to say is the whole film actually feels very familiar, but it's done in a good way. And it uses a lot of kind of long-running trappings that are from horror films. It's not just taking from one horror film in particular, though. It actually does feel like it's two subgenres kind of meshed together. It feels like it's the J-horror typical film mixed with a bunch of the slasher typical film. And you'll kind of see what I mean. If you keep that in mind when you're watching it, uh, it works pretty well. Now, the slasher aspect kind of goes away at some point, but very early on you can see what I'm talking about. It's this meshing of... It's like the evil thing and everything happening with the, the evil thing is very J-horror. But all the people involved and everything else is very slasher. And they're just kind of coming together. But then it just, the J-horror ends up taking over almost fully at some point. So, But I thought it was interesting. It was it was an interesting meshing of those two subgenres. And I appreciated it. So this film's not perfect. The, you know, obviously I had some gripes with it. But overall I liked it. Uh, for a Shutter original, it is a good Shutter original. I would recommend seeing it. Uh, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to go with a three, a solid three-star rating. Uh, check it out. So thanks, everyone, for checking this out. Thank you again, Shudder, for sending me screeners because this was a screener. Thank you to Sean Redlitz. I know he's the one who kind of puts all these things together, and he's working hard. So thank you, Sean. And he's always nice in his emails. Super good guy. Um, but thanks, everyone, for checking this out. Do me a quick favor. Hit the subscribe if you like any review videos or any other videos I do. Um, Put a comment down here. Let's talk about this movie or other horror stuff. That's fine. If you're already subscribed, um, please just give me a thumbs up on this if you want to keep encouraging me. Uh, but the big thing is I need those subscribers because like 75% of the views I get on videos are from non-subscribers. And if all these people would subscribe, then I could start taking YouTube's money. I'm doing live streams now and someone had said, oh, you can get super chats and stuff. I don't want super chats. I don't want you people's money. I don't want money from the audience. I want money from YouTube because they're a company and they cannot spare that money. <laughs> you guys keep your money. I will give you free content. That's fine. I just want the money from YouTube. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. Until next time, keep it brutal.